Is the Mormon Church a cult? Let's find out. This is a continuation of the last video I did covering the behavior control part of it. I recommend watching that video first to understand the grading system, but you don't need to. I will put a tag for that if you'd like to go and watch it. First step of information control, or the I in bite model, is the biggest thing that puts cults ahead of religion. The fact that information from within is limited to the cultist is a big part of keeping them in in the first place. Up first is deception. There are three subcategories. One, deliberately withhold information. Two, distort information to make it more acceptable. And three, systematically lie to the cult member. I will be putting down a 16 for this. Mormon prophets and apostles lie all the time, and currently are. The biggest lie that made me leave was no unpaid ministry. We know for a fact that the church pays its leaders $120,000 salary. The church's website says, The living allowance is uniform for all general authorities. How much is it? Well, in the year 2000, Apostle Henry B. Irene was making about $83,000 salary. As part of 2014, they make $120,000. So, yeah. The church does lie. They have also lied about electroshock therapy at BYU for gay students, involvement in Prop 8, church history and DNA evidence for the Book of Mormon. Up next is minimalize or discourage access to non-cult sources of information, including internet and TV, books, articles, newspapers, magazines, and other media. Critical information, former members, keeping members busy so they don't have to so they don't have time to think and investigate and control through cell phone and texting calls with internet tracking. I will, I will be putting down another 16. Looking at non-cult sources for information is extremely forbidden. They deem anything that goes against the church as anti-Mormon. As of right now, I am anti-Mormon putting out anti-Mormon content. The church puts in plan this black and white thinking, us against them. So, yeah, I'm going to be putting down a 16 for this. Compartmentalize information into insider and outsider is number three, and this is going straight up to a 32. Like I stated, the church forbids any research on any anti-Mormon websites or YouTubers. Number four is encourage spying on other members. Again, there are three subcategories. Number one is impose a buddy system to monitor and control members, report deviant thoughts and feelings and actions to leadership, and number three, ensure that individual behavior is monitored by the group. I will be putting down an 8. However, you can make a case for 16 and even 32 because of Mormon missions and through emotional control, but it isn't as bad as something like Heaven's Gate. Extensive use of cult-generated information propaganda. This is number 4 and I'm putting down a 16 for this. They have magazines for literally every age through the Enzyme, New Era, Come Follow Me, The Strength of Youth, and YouTube videos about topics mainly the church helping people out in bad situations. Number six for information control is unethical use of confession. I put down a four. The confessions are mainly by choice, however they do use a lot of buddy buddy stuff to get people outed. So it isn't a two or one, but it is a four. Up next, going to be thought control. This is the third part of the bite model. Number one is require members to internalize the group's doctrine as truth as the church tells itself the only true church, I'd have to put a 16. Even incorrect doctrine like Noah's Flood, the Tower of Babel, the earth being created in six days is all taught as truth by Mormon leaders. Even though no worldwide flood that ever covered the earth happened, people can't just teleport across the world, and the fact that we watch solar systems being created right now are all proof of no Mormon god. Number two is change a person's name and identity. You get a new spiritual name when you enter the temple. Granted, it isn't unique to you. Everyone that goes through on that day gets the same name. They call each other brother and sister instead of their real names, so I'm putting down an eight. They don't legally change a name, but they do call you other things besides your actual name. Number three under thought control is use of loaded language and cliches, which constrict knowledge and stop critical thoughts. I am putting down a 16. I have personal experience with this. When I was on my way out, I talked to my I talked to my grandma about my concerns. She didn't give me anything except for a quote by Elder Uchtdorf which said, Doubt your doubts. 
before you doubt your faith. I knew at that very moment that that was a way of thought control and realized I was in a cult. They also hold general conferences, and this recent one was focused on the, on the idea of stay with us. You have nowhere else to go. Number four is encourage only good and proper thoughts. This is an eight because you are allowed to feel emotion. But they do teach bad thoughts are of the devil, and it is a demonic tactic to get you to leave. So, it isn't Heaven's Gate or Jehovah's Witness is bad, but it is pretty bad. Number five is hypnotic techniques used to alter mental states. In psychology, there is a bias called confirmation bias. The church uses this a lot. They always tell you that you should look for a feeling if the Book of Mormon was true. If you are told to think that a pink elephant wearing a tutu was right in front of you, what do you think of? So, the church doesn't use hypnosis, but they do use psychological tactics to ensure thought control. So, I'm putting down an eight. Memories are manipulated and false memories are created. This is 100% a 16. They teach that Joseph Smith did polygamy for the sake of getting people to heaven. Tell that to the 14-year-old girl Joseph married. Or tell me why the view on the Godhead changed multiple times. Or the first vision having four separate and different accounts. But we only focus on the 1832 account. The church uses gaslighting techniques to their fullest in this sense. Number seven follows pretty close to number five, so we will kind of skip it. But I do want to say that it is an eight. It follows along the lines of confirmation bias and uh, techniques to kind of like alter the mental state of somebody. Uh, speaking of eights, let's go to number eight, which is rejection of rational analysis, critical thinking, and constructive criticism. I will say this is the only 32 today. This is a 32 because... Thought stopping is the name of the game when it comes to thought control. I want to talk about the last part of this though, constructive criticism. Every year it seems like an LDS bishop is outed as a sexual predator. Sam Young was excommunicated by the church for trying to solve this problem. He started the Save Every Child movement, which was a way to have another guardian or priesthood member in the room at the same time during the worthiness interviews. He was excommunicated for trying to protect children from predators. Wow. Good job. Good job, Mormon. Number nine is forbid critical questions about leader, doctor, or policy allowed. This is a complete 16. President Nelson's wife spoke in the UK recently saying, put a question mark on worldly news, but put an, excla put an exclamation point on prophetic news. This is just one more way of thought stopping and putting another thing in insider and outsider. Number 10 is labeling alternative belief systems as illegitimate, evil, or not useful. Again, I was taught that the church is the only true church. I want to turn to Brad Wilcox though. He spoke at an Alpine fireside recently and it was all focused on why you should stay in the church. Use an acronym, PROFIT. The O in PROFIT stood for the only true church. He spoke that other churches were only playing church and they didn't have authority from God, so it gets a 16. Number 11 is a 16 again though. It is instill a new map of reality. Again, they believe that things are anti-true and are completely fabricated, such as Native Americans being from Jerusalem, the flood covering the entire earth. Also, they once believed there were people on the moon, and Joseph Smith called people to serve their missions on the moon. Well. That covers up thought control. And we move on to the last segment here, which is emotional control. Number one under emotional control is manipulate and narrow the range of feelings, such as bad feelings are evil. I'm putting an eight down for this. It isn't as bad as Jehovah's Witness, but they do teach that contention is of the devil. Number two is teach emotion stopping techniques to block feelings of homesickness, anger, and doubt. This is an eight, maybe a 16, but I will stick with an eight. They do teach to turn on the church in times of doubt, as well as use scare tactics to keep you in. Number three is make the person feel that the problem is always their own fault, never the leader's or the group's fault. Well, it certainly can't be the leadership. That is wrong. We found that out with Sam Young. Yeah, no, this is definitely a 32. Number four is promote feelings of guilt or unworthiness, such as identity guilt, not living up to potential, family is deficient, past is suspect, affiliations are unwise, 
thoughts, feelings, actions are irrelevant or selfish, social guilt, and historical guilt. All this adds up to about an eight. They believe that you should always be in service of your fellow men. The big one that takes it up, though, is social guilt. When you are deemed unworthy, you aren't allowed to perform things such as sacrament, temple trips, and sometimes not even allowed to go to church. This is all part of worthiness interviews that make kids feel like shit. Number five is instill fear of the world. This is a 16. The subcategory is follows. Thinking independently, the outside world, enemies, losing salvation, leaving or being shunned by the group, and others' disapproval. This hits home with me because I had a hard time telling people that I was an ex-Mormon. I made a Facebook post three separate times just to take it down within seconds. I was scared of everything on this list. Number six is extremes of emotional highs and lows. Love bombing and praise one moment and then declaring you are a horrible sinner the next. Yeah, this is, an, this is about an eight. Uh, the love bombing is certainly a thing, that, though, making you feel at home unless you are a sinner. Then you are outed as evil and confused. Number seven is ritualistic and sometimes public confessions of sins. This is an eight. They don't do ritual stuff and they definitely don't do it public, but it is mainly you confessing to them. Once a year, I had a birthday interview where I would go and I would lie to the bishop so I wouldn't get emotionally hurt. Um, and they also do a lot of using people who are in an emotional state of mind to get others to confess as well. Uh, for example, if someone were to be like outed as masturbating or watching pornography, they'd be brought into the bishop, and the bishop would then use that emotional state of mind to get the friend to confess other friends that are doing it as well. All right, the last point for emotional control is phobia indoctrination in calculating irrational fears which about leaving the group. This is the final 32. I was told that without the church, my life was meaningless. I was told that if I left, I would be consumed by darkness and, sp and be spiteful. So after all of this, is the Mormon church a cult? Yes. Yes, it is. They use control tactics to keep families in. They use the ends to justify the means quote a lot and are very similar to Jehovah's Witness. Thank you and goodbye.